Good morning. Today is the second Sunday of Lent. This Mass is being offered for Walter and Rosa. We have the following announcements. Rest in peace, Richard McCord. This week's second collection will be for heat and energy. There will be exposition of the Blessed Sacrament for private prayer on Monday, 6 to 7 p.m. Tuesday, there will be exposition at 4 p.m., Stations of the Cross and Benediction at 6 p.m., Confessions at 6.30 to the last person in line. First Friday Mass will be at 8 a.m. following the exposition of the Blessed Sacrament till 12.30 p.m. in the Rectory Chapel. First Saturday Mass at 8 a.m. followed by the Chaplet of the Sorrowful Mother. Parochial School is back in session on Monday at 5.30 p.m. for healing, Wednesday at 9 a.m. for pinching, and Friday for boiling. Help is needed and appreciated. Contact Linda Brennan, Millie Sovinsky, or Ann Bridget. Any parish volunteers who work with children and all employees, background checks are all coming due for renewal soon. Please take a background check authorization form from the back of the church. Any questions, contact the referee. This is Pennsylvania State Law. Those who are qualified, please remember to schedule your COVID-19 vaccine shot. We need to keep you in the queue. Thank you to those who stay after Sunday Masses each week to sanitize the queues. Please join with me in saying the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel.
O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that in the spiritual sight may be pure, we may enjoy, rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Last week when we began our Sundays of Lent, we heard a, a familiar reading which we hear for the first Sunday every year, that of Jesus being tempted in the desert. And this Sunday we hear the story of the transfiguration where Christ is seen in his glory and quite often the homeless will talk about the transfiguration of us seeing Jesus' divinity to kind of prepare us for the tragedy that will end in another five weeks. But if you take some time and you ponder this, this Sunday's Gospel is also a temptation story. It's the temptation of Peter. And Peter's temptation is his desire to want to stay on the mountain and build three booths. Because he does not want to come down from the mountain ever again. He has seen God in his glory. And now he's very content. Maybe you and I have had similar feelings. When you go on that vacation, that is just so wonderful. Whether it be to the shore or the mountains or we make a trip somewhere, we do not want to come home. It's almost like perfect for us. Some of us might say that, well, Peter's only performing a, an act of kindness because he sees Jesus in his glory and he sees Jesus with Moses and Elijah and they're relating so well together. But actually, the temptation of St. Peter is packaged up in the line. He used the glory of God where he is happy to be, not where God wants him to be. And once again, how very often in our own lives we want to be happy where we want to be and not necessarily the life circumstances. Hidden is the, in the temptation, is the seduction to replace the giver with the gift. We get so caught up in the gift, the moment, that we fail 
help to realize who is the one that has made all this possible. Who is the one who has given us this gift? You might recall a, a homily that I gave a number of years ago where I was doing the spiritual exercises to an individual. And as we began the exercises, he told me that the most important things in his life were his wife and his children. And he loves his God. But he said, if God would do anything to hurt my wife or my children, I would turn against God. And lo and behold, that kind of came true. There was a challenge in their marriage, and he needed to make a decision. And the decision that he made was to pray all the harder to God. And in his prayer and in spiritual direction, he realized that the things that he wanted to hold on to, his wife and his children, were really gifts from God. And that he had to, in a sense, let them go. Knowing that God would take care of all of them. And when he was able to do that, God blessed him and the marriage became fruitful once again. Things began to work out with his kids once again. And probably one of the most beautiful things that he does, this man and his wife, is every day before they go to work, they pray together. God is the giver of all good gifts. And God allows us to see his divinity. Not to get caught up in the temptation of wanting to stay in a place that's nice and wholesome. But rather to come down the mountain and face the struggles in life. The good times and the bad. The riches and the poor. The sicknesses and the health. And find God there in the midst of all of the joys and consolations, and also to find God in all the sorrows and the desolations. Jesus realized, out of his love for the Father, out of his recognition of his Father, he had to come down from that mountain and face his arrest and his suffering and his death. Each and every day, when you and I live up to our lives, there is a little bit of a suffering and a death, a giving up of oneself. We do it, hopefully, for the love of God through our prayer. You know, this whole notion to me of how so very often that we are tempted to replace the giver of the gift with the gift itself. Every one of us in our education has pursued something that we like. To be a physical therapist, to be a school teacher, to be a priest, to be an engineer, to be a nurse, to be a doctor, To be a carpenter or a handyman, whatever it may be, this was something that we enjoy and something that we are good at, and we wanted to be able to share those talents and abilities. And the work of our hands. But you know, we also live in a world today where a lot of people say how much they hate their jobs and how they can't wait to retire.
And I was speaking to someone who told me how much they hate to go to work each and every day. And I said, then why did you choose to do what you do? Well, because I want to be able to help people. I want to be there for people. And I said, well then, go work with that in mind. Not how bad the working conditions are. And the reason why you do it. Yes, there are bad working conditions. Yes, employers really do disrespect their employees if they only treated them better. And yeah, there are also employees who are rather lazy or deceitful. But that's not up for us. That's for God. Let us be mindful of the fact that Peter's temptation today to want to stay in a fantasy land. Let us live in the present, not the past, not the future, and say, Lord, whether today is great or today is really bad, let me do it with you. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, many of our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Like St. Peter, we believe that it is wonderful for us to be here. In the Divine Presence, we confidently bring our prayers to God, our Father. For the Pope, the bishops, and other leaders of the Church, that they may always lead us to the glory of our heavenly homeland, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that the transfiguration of Jesus Christ may make us aware of the presence and glory of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, the lonely, and the oppressed, that through our practical care they may see the favored Son of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may find it wonderful to worship in the company of the saints of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sick, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dead, that they may enjoy the blessed vision of divine glory forever, especially Walter and Joshua, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, with grace and glory, you transform our lives by these prayers. Strengthen us to come through the trials of this earthly life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our offering number 587. Both
The Lord is my light, number 587. <laughs> This is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
just please bring a, a paring knife or a, a potato peeler, and it's a lot of fun, and you'd certainly be appreciated if you can help out Monday night. Wednesday, we need to make a boatload of pierogies, so if your Wednesday might be free beginning at 9 a.m. to help pinch. And then it worked out great this past Friday because of the help that we received. We uh, normally have to start at 4 a.m. and it goes until after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But with having the two kitchens open, we were able to start boiling pierogies at 6 and the ladies were done realistically by about 11.30. So that's a tremendous help. So if you could come out and help us to at least keep both kitchens going so that many hands make light work and we take care of everybody in that particular fashion. I hope everyone has a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Thank <laughs> you.